Hello, welcome to this video. Today we're looking at the Teams app installed on Mac OS. I'm going to go through step by step on creating a team, showing you how to create it, adding that functionality, adding different channels to your team, and then how to enable your colleagues to join your team. So down here in the bottom left corner, we can create or join a team. So if we click on that, if you've been sent a code, you can just add the code there to join a team that someone else has created, or you can create your own team. So we can click on the Create Team button. We've got different options available. So if you're a teacher using this with your students or your learners, you could create a class and click on that one. I think Teams provides a great opportunity to share resources and links and articles related to the development of your team. So a personal learning community is a really great use of Microsoft Teams and you can go in there and configure that and it just means that you've got a space to share those resources, those articles, those links, to have those debates about your curriculum area and how it is evolving and developing. But the one we're going to focus on today is, is staff members. So we click on staff members. First thing we need to do is put in a name. and set whether it be private or public. So in most cases, I think you're probably gonna set it as a private space. So we're gonna leave it as private and we're gonna click next. So that's gonna create the team for us. And at this point, we could add in names. So we could just start typing the name and it would bring up everyone related to that name in, within the organization and we could add them. You can also, as it says on the text there, you can put in the email address of colleagues who don't work for your organization. So if you wanted, say, your EV to be able to look at this, this Teams, you could add their email address and then they would be able to look at the team and contribute to it. So we're gonna skip that for the moment, but that's how you could do that. And now we're gonna look at adding some channels. So if we click on the dots, we've got a variety of things we can do. And the first thing we're gonna do is add channels. So a channel provides you with a new conversation and a new set of tabs. And that means you can have tabs that are specific to particular projects that you're working on. So if we go add channel, and this means it's much easier to find the files and the conversations you've had, as opposed to having them all in a general channel, you can have specific channels for specific projects. So I'm gonna put in project A, obviously it would, you probably have a slightly more interesting title than that, but for the purposes of this demo. And then we do the same for a second one. And add that. So we've got our channels. And as I've said, each channel has its own tab for conversations, its own tab for files, its own tab for notes. And you can add your own apps and functionality to it. So for example, if I go into to project A and I click on the plus, I can add specific apps or maybe a link to a website that I want accessible via my Teams page. So if I go, or this particular channel, so if I click on planner, I can put in the, the name of my tab. So this could be related to the project save I've ticked the box so now my project day will bring up my embedded planner and without having to leave to go to planner I can add my buckets and my tasks I can set a due date I can assign that to colleagues who are within my team and everyone can can see that without having to leave and come back. So it's a great way of adding functionality. You click on the plus and you look for the apps that you want to add. With notes, you can make use of OneNote and it will configure a OneNote, which you can have again embedded within that page. So you can be all contributing to different elements of a OneNote that you've created and OneNotes 
as you see in another video on my channel, um, is a but in essence a collaborative notebook where you can add sections and pages and work through that. With files, you can upload files. So you can upload files and if you click upload, you can upload files from your computer. So I could upload that image. Or I could also, if I choose to create a new folder and maybe create a presentation. I can name that presentation and everyone within the team would have access to that presentation. And it will, will open up PowerPoint online and will allow me to edit that. And alongside that, I can start a conversation. So I can have a chat function alongside my presentation as I'm working. So I can work collaboratively with my colleagues. So I'm gonna close that for the moment. So there's my presentation. If we go to the conversations tab, you can see it highlights the fact that I've created a, a planner called Project Day. And down the bottom I can have, I can type new conversations. I can also do that by just clicking on the pencil at the top will allow me to type a conversation. So I can either just type some information in there. If I want to be able to format my text, I can I use the format function. I can add attachments. I could add a, an emoji if I felt that was appropriate. Uh, I'm not sure of the appropriateness of adding uh, animated GIFs, but there's an option to do that. Likewise, there's also an option to add stickers. And finally, you can also start a video chat with those within your team by clicking on the little video app icon that's there. So that's the, the tabs and how you add channels to your team. The other thing you can do to ease the, the adding of team members, instead of manually adding their names and inviting them, if you go to manage team, and settings, you can go to the team code section and you can generate a code that will enable people to join that team, making it really easy. You just send them the email out saying, this is the code, they log on to Teams, they enter the code and then they're part of the team. You can choose who can use the at team and at channel mentions. You can set guest permissions. You can set member permissions. So you can say who who allows the creating and updating of channels. So it could be that you decide just the owner can do that. And anyway, you've got various other settings that you can choose, determining whether members or owners are required to do stuff. You can add a team picture, either by going team picture or clicking on the the icon there. Obviously, the more you the more teams that are. Uh, uh, organizations are using the easiest to identify the team by a, by an icon or a picture. And from the settings you can also look at the the channels that have been set up. Pending requests would only be there if you've asking people to join uh, via email and then you've got the member section and you'd be able to add members or remove members as required. So there you have a quick overview of Teams via the Mac OS X app. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to the channel and join me again soon for more EdTech videos.